Lowther Hills. So we've got a wild camp tonight. So clear skies. It's going to temperatures going to drop down to about minus two. So we're well prepped up. So come on, let's go for another adventure. Well, this afternoon we're back out again. This is us just stopped off at One Lock Head. This is uh, the village that's set in the deep of the Lowther Hills. This wee village, it's uh, 1,530 feet above sea level, so it's the highest village in Scotland. So we're going out camping tonight and it's clear skies. So the temperatures have dropped down to about minus two. So we're well prepped up tonight, so it's going to be a right cold one. But uh, I'm running short of time, so today we're just going to go around and get set up and enjoy the night. And then tomorrow I'll take you down through the village and let you see what's there. This is back out again, out for another wild camp this weekend. This will be the first camp I've been out since I come back for holiday there, so I'll feel the difference in cold day. Eh? 30 degrees last week, this week it's sitting at 3 degrees at the minute and it's to drop to minus 2 tonight. So I'm out in the, the Lowther Hills and I'm just following the river round to a wee location by a wee tiny waterfall. So hopefully there's been plenty of rain over the last two or three weeks and um, we've got some late winter sunshine this afternoon so we'll get set up before it gets dark it's dark about 4.30 at this time of the year so it'll be a long night but we're prepped up uh, no got a lot of time the day for to go exploring so we'll get all that tomorrow but uh, tonight's about setting the tent up getting a wee fire going I've got a raised fire pit so no damage and just enjoying the time so come on let's go I followed the waterfall in from where I came the last time. I passed there two wee small ones and there was a wee area there and just see it the centre of the picture. Quite rocky, so I said I'll come up to the top of this wee hill here and have a look because the, the big golf ball's up over the top. And lo and behold, a wee hidden gem. Didn't even know this was here. So guess what? This is where we're going to be pitched up tonight. A nice flat bit over that corner, so that'll do us fine. It's great what you can find when you come out exploring. As I say, I've been up here twice, but no as far up as this. And uh, find a nice wee cracking wee spot, so this will do nicely. So we've got the MSR and I'll let you see my setup. So it's going to be a cold one tonight, so we're set up for the winter tonight. So I've got the silver foil underneath, I've got the Amok Four Seasons airbed, and I've got the winter rab bag, which is the, the 1100 series. So we've got to be nice and cosy there, but we've got added extras. We've got our gloves, I've got my Trapper John hat, I've got a buff, so we're not going to be cold. And uh, again, as I say, it's location, location. So tonight we're, we're set up in the middle of the Lowther Hills. And this is a wee locking that I've found. So I'm going to go a wee bit exploring. See what I can find. There might be another wee waterfall further up here. That's me finally set up. I've had a wee wander about. Uh, it's a bit quarter to five so the tent's been set up but you can see the tent itself there wow the frost is already set out on the tent so it's just going to get colder and colder tonight so forecast is for about minus three minus two but as i say it's only 10 to five the new look at that 
absolutely freezing, but I'm all wrapped up and uh, got plenty of layers in the tent there and I'm going to get a wee fire going just in a wee while and get some dinner cooked up. So it's going to be a right chilly one tonight. That's me got the fire going, it's really frosty. So I'm quite happy to get this a wee bit earlier. So dinner, dinner tonight, I've got garlic, chilli, coriander, marinated prawns and a couple of slices of salad, salmon. So I'm going to steam them and make a pocket up out of the silver foil and uh, we'll drop it up onto the fire and we'll steam them away for 10 minutes or so. My salmon and prawns bubbling away there. So I've created a big envelope and they're all steaming inside, so that's perfect. And again, I've got my raised fire pit, so there's no damage done. So another five minutes or so, and that'll be ready to eat. Perfect. Just ready to get them served up now. Well, that's him ready now, that's garlic, chilli and coriander, king prawns and a couple of fillets of salmon, all cooked on the fire. Yeah, it's been snowing overnight. I knew it was cold last night. It was it was about minus three, minus four, and I was up about four o'clock in the morning for to go for the call of nature. And uh, the door of the tent was just like a bit of cardboard. I opened it and it just it just sat there straight. But uh, about six o'clock this morning, I heard the uh, on the roof of the tent, and I says, "Oh, it's raining. I'll just lie a wee while longer." So I opened the door there, thinking everything was going to be wet, but it's actually white. So a nice wee snow camp to start the year. Just a light dust in the snow. Good. Bring it on, bring more. Well, that's us walking back out. Oh, it was a bloody cold in last night, but yeah, right, that's what layers are all about. So I was perfect. I was nice and cosy in the tent. Four o'clock, five o'clock last night, the tent was already frozen, so. It was an early night with the, the fire on and get everything all cooked up and get the dinner sorted. And then during the night, the, the temperature plummeted because I got up during the night for a call of nature and the door was like a bit of cardboard. It just sat there. It was quite funny, actually. And then about six o'clock this morning, I thought it was rain. And I had a wee quick look out and lo and behold, there was a, it was snowing. <laughs> so the first snow of the year. So if you've enjoyed this one, give a wee thumbs up and leave a comment below as usual. And if you've not subscribed to the channel, please do because it helps me grow the channel. So till the next one, be good, stay safe. This is following the trail coming down, so it's winter time, so the, the mine itself is closed. But that's a wee office where you'd normally get your, your ticket. This is the way down into the entrance to the mine. Lock and Nell Mine, 1710 to 1860. All locked up. I think I'll come back up here in the summertime. We can actually get inside. Let's see if we can see anything. That's the entrance down into the mine. That's St John's Church. It looks as if it's still well used. It's well kept anyway, all double glaze and big wood heater. But that would be the heart of the community. Such a small village. But we're just going to take a walk down here to the Beam Engine. 
it's still, you know, it's just all driven by water and it's early engines as they say, but I'll let you see it when we get a bit closer. So this is a one lock head beam engine. I'll show you this here. There you go, you can see it. How it would work. It's the old bogies. They'd be used, they'd either be pulled by horse to take the ore in and out for up to get processed. Well, today we're doing in Lead Hills, so this is part two. I was down here in January and uh, I done the village and the actual the, the the top end of the lead mines where they separated it, and then they moved it down here later on as the years progressed to bigger and better stuff. So this is a uh, the new setup. This is actually the crushing mill house or whatever's left of the crushing mill house. So everything used to be done by hand, but then it automated in, in the early 1800s. So I'll let you see this. So this bit of over here, I'll we'll move on across, it's just the, the ruins of what's left. So you can see the wee arch down the bottom right hand corner, and as we're looking at it straight on, it's a pool of water, so that's where the big the wheel would be. So there'd be a big water wheel there, cascading there, and that would come through a shaft into a series of gears on here, and this is what remains of the crusher. So the big water wheel on the right would turn the, the wheels and the gears and this in turn would turn this crusher here and that would process the rock and they, they would go along various different parts of it along here and separate it out. So the, what they're trying to get out of it is the ore. So you can see bits of machinery, the old bits, it's all cast and even wood. But uh, as I say, that's the, the remnants of the crusher house. And you see the bits where it's all tangled and twisted. inside one of these barns. This can only presume would be a smelter of some description for the because it's a series of kilns and undergrafts breathers but a big brick sticks up there just to the top left of the corner of the picture. Something's obviously taking fancy to that. It looks like it's an owl. There's loads of droppings and there's lots and lots and lots of pellets so it comes here every night but it looks it. You can see the pellets and you can see, actually see what they've been eating. This is another part of the workings, so it's a wee climb up the hill. So I just caught the sign out of the corner of my eye and stopped and said, right, well here, I'll walk up and see what this bit is.
Another valley I didn't even notice here. The more workings. Good. Good to learn. So this is where it would be. This is the, the last part of the, what they call the atmospheric engine. So if you look at the last picture there you'll see all the details of when it was invented and so forth. But this is what's left. Thank you. 